So in this video, I want to do another head-to-head -head and put up my Tudor Black Bay 39 against my my Seiko 5 SRPE 53, which I believe, if you look at them, they are, let me just, I mean, what a classic comparison, both on Jubilee bracelets, obviously the Seiko 5 is an aftermarket strap code bracelet, but still, what a similar look. And we're talking about $4,000 versus about $300 total with the strap code bracelet. And I've been, I've been actually meaning to do this video for quite a while because I've always, I always felt that this was a great head to head. And to kind of give you an idea, what can you get for 300 versus what $4,000 gets you? And should you, should you pay the $4,000 to get the, the tutor, or is this Seiko all you really need? So in this video, I want to answer that. And let's go to the other room and check them out. So in this video, I'm gonna I'm gonna put up my Seiko 5 uh, Dress KX up against my Tudor Black Bay 39. I'm gonna judge them on finish, case, style, bracelet, class, movement, value, and and a special category called dressiness. Uh, just to maybe it'll be a tie tiebreaker. Who knows? As far as finish, so let me start with the the Seiko. The Seiko is for uh, being a $300 watch. I believe is nicely finished. Uh, has some night nice, has polished elements has some brushed elements the 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 overall finishing of the bracelet i was i would say is i mean given the price isn't bad i'm going to award the seiko a three for finish and the finishing on the tutor is uh next is uh is definitely a higher level um the Overall, the the quality of the watch, I would I would call it. This definitely gets you into the realm of what a luxury watch feels and feels like in the hand, what it feels like to wear, and the and uh, the finishing on it is uh, superior in pretty much every way. But it does cost over ten times more, so you kind of have to. You would hope that it would be a superior watch. Is it ten times better? I, I probably not. Is it two times better? Maybe, maybe three times better? Could be, definitely not 10 times better. There's, that goes to show you about diminishing returns when it comes to uh, watch finishing. So I'm gonna award the, the Tudor a four for finishing. So as far as the case is concerned for the Seiko, uh, again, nice, uh, it's not just a like one dimensional, like all polished or all brushed. It, it's got some polishing, it's got some brushing. Uh, the case size is, is, uh, is perfectly adequate. It's a, uh, it's a very, uh, it's a restrained lug to lug. The case height is, is definitely acceptable and not, not, it's not too thick. It feels nice. You can still slide it under your cuff. It is a very nice case. Got some bit, it has a bit of a integrated, like a, uh, uh, crown guard built into the case, which is a nice feature given that this, this, this is a diver based dressed watch. So, uh, it has the display case back there just so you can see the NA, the 4R36 movement. So, uh, I'm going to I'm going to award the Seiko a 4 for case design. The the Tudor, I would say, uh, has similar dimensions to the to the to the Seiko. It is a it is a nicely finished case, obviously nice height. Um, it is a uh, has no does not have crown guards. The, the Tudor case is uh, nicely finished, has a solid case back, very customary to Tudors and Rolexes. So I, overall, I'm gonna award it exactly the same at four as the as the Seiko 5. So as far as the bracelet is concerned, uh, obviously I don't have the, the stock bracelet installed. I'm gonna judge the, the one that I have installed. It is a, the strap code is in, is in a, it is an upgraded bracelet, it is a Jubilee five link style bracelet. It has, you know, pretty good finishing. Uh, I think this is an under $100 bracelet that you can buy on Strap Code, and uh, obviously it's got a mill deployment. It's got some. It's got some a uh, good amount of micro adjustability on on the clasp. It has a flip lock. It is a pretty secure feeling clasp. Uh, overall, high quality bracelet. Uh, if I was going to rate the, the stock one, I would put it at a, maybe a two, I would give it a two, but I'm going to give this one a, a four. Um, the Tudor bracelet is, uh, better. It has better finishing. The polish in the middle of the links is, uh, of a higher quality. It is nicely finished on the clasp. Yeah, I can get scratched as you can see. It, it's, it's just polished, so it's going to get scratched. It also has a flip lock. The micro adjust, micro adjustability system is... Uh, 
is class leading. It's very simple to use. You just pull it out, sort of like a glide lock from Lorolex and a miniature version, I'd say. Yeah, I think it moves a centimeter if I'm not mistaken, or if I'm not entirely, I don't exactly remember, but it does, gives you some micro adjustability on the fly, which with the toolless, which is great. That alone makes it worth it. The deployant is polished. And um, I'm gonna give this bracelet a five. To judge the class, uh, this is, uh, none of the, both of these watches uh, have decent, this is a more of a utilitarian clasp. It is just okay. It's got some decent micro adjustability. I'm gonna give this clasp a three for the sake, for the Seiko strap code clasp. And I'm gonna give the clasp another five for the, uh, for this, uh, for the Tudor. I think it is one of the nicest looking clasps in my collection with the T-Fit clasp and all that and the nice polishing and the signed uh, Tudor shield there. It is just a lovely clasp. And again, class leading. The movement in the Seiko is a 4R36, very robust movement. You know, one would argue that this movement is probably not serviceable or it's not worth your money or time, you know, to get a watchmaker to service this. Even if, you know, after 10 years, it starts running bad. It's probably one of these uh, movements that you'd probably be cheaper to just replace the whole thing. And, you know, I mean, why would you want to pay like $200 to service a $40 movement? You know, so that's, you know, given that, uh, I would say that this, I'm going to say that, the, you know, it, it is good for what it is. So I'm going to give it a three. It is just an average, very good movement. And, but it's nothing to write home about. It's not terribly decorated. It's, the Tudors is not decorated either, but uh, it is a very good movement. And that's all I'm going to say. Uh, the movement, uh, the, so the, the movement on the, the, on the, uh, the Black Bay 39 is a certified chronometer. It is a semi, you know, it, it's made by Kinesi, which is sort of like a, you know, Tudor owns that company. So it's sort of in-house, semi-in-house, you could say. I'm just going to award the, the, the Tudor movement and give it a four. Because uh, it is a superior movement. It is a higher beat movement. It's a four hertz movement versus a three hertz movement. And uh, probably, and it is more accurate. And uh, yeah, it's a four. I'm going to give it a four. As far as dial is concerned, I mean, obviously they're very diff you know, very similar dials. They both have their, these are both sort of like diver based uh, uh, dress watches. So they have plentiful loom. They have nice, you know, uh, applied loom plots there and, and applied markers there. So um, they're similar. These, I felt like this is a very, very good. These are very good watches to kind of like put head to head together because they're so similar. They both have sunburst finishes. And given the price of the Seiko, this is a fantastic dial. It just shimmers and shines when you're moving it around in the sun. And it does exactly what you would want a nice sunburst dial to do. The loom is, in fact, superior to my Tudor. Um, so it is a really good watch. Really good, really great dial, in my opinion. The hand, the watch hands are very nice and legible. So it is not only an easy watch to read, but it is just a really stunning looking watch for the money. The Tudor is also, uh, obviously also based on the Black Bay Divers, uh, has lots of loom, not not quite as good as the Seiko's loom with their uh, Lumabrite, uh, but uh, really nice dial. The, the champagne, kind of like a silvery light champagne color dial is just mesmerizing when you catch it right in the light. It is a very nice uh, dial. So yeah, I'm gonna award the, the Seiko. I'm gonna, honestly, I'm gonna give both of them five. They're, they have equally, given the price of the Seiko, I gotta give it a five. And given the quality of the Tudors, I also gotta give it a five. Beautiful dials, both. So as far as value, so I'm gonna, this is this is probably gonna be easy. The, the, the Seiko is a five in value, it is only, you can probably find these for two hundred dollars on Amazon any pretty much any day. You can buy a strap code bracelet or like an Uncle Straps bracelet and uh, you know make it look even better. Uh, still keeping it under about three hundred dollars of a total investment. Uh, so this is an easy five. This is a this is the one of the biggest value best values in the entire watch industry. So um, the Tudor. You know, to, value is relative. You know, I, I'm, I do I regret paying what I did for this watch? Absolutely not. I think it's totally worth it. Um, yeah, but it's hard to judge against such a value-oriented watch like Seiko. I would say that I'm going to give this a four in value because I really do think you're getting your money's worth with this watch. Obviously, it's just hard to compare with such a inexpensive watch. But uh, 
you are getting such a nice such nice finishing such a beautiful dial and uh yeah that, i mean this this thing has the full package and I, do, I really do think it is worth the cost you can obviously and these things are coming down in price on the secondary market and and obviously if you want to go through the gray market route you can do that as well and these you, these i i can see a day where these are going to be running about three thousand dollars which would put it about 10 times the price of the seiko um, again, value is relative, but I'm going to give this a four. So dressiness, uh, both of these watches, you know, uh, when I think of a dress watch, I think of a slightly smaller watch, something that's very thin, something that could fit under like a nice long sleeve button down shirt, um, something that fits well, easily under the cuff. And these are thin enough, I would say for that, but these are more on the sporty side of dressy, I could say, but obviously they can be used for the, uh, these are easily all around watches. These could, these could easily be like a one watch collection kind of watch, do it all watch. I'm gonna award uh, the Seiko a three for dressiness and I gotta give the Tudor a five. It might have to do with the color of the dial. It just lends itself more to dress, dressiness. And then the overall finishing of the dial is better. The crown doesn't have a crown guard. Usually don't see crown guards on like a, on a, on a dress watch. It's just, you know, you don't need to protect the crown. You're not gonna do anything too rough. And overall, I believe the, the Tudor is the superior dress watch, uh, so I'm going to award it a 5. After tallying up the scores, Seiko received a total of 30 points, which is a fantastic showing for, for any $300 watch. But the Tudor was still the winner with 36 points. I mean, they're both very, very nice watches, and Seiko put up a hell of a fight, but the, the Tudor did end up scoring more at 36 points. So yeah, that's the end of the head-to-head. -head. So I uh, hope you liked that video, me like, putting up the Tudor Black Bay 39 versus the Seiko 5 SRPE 53. As far as value, I mean, the Seiko is the clear winner. You can easily get the, the this watch for about $200, plus if you get the, the strap code brace, it's about another 100, so about $300. It's, uh, it's an unbeatable value. The Tudor's just not gonna win in that regard, but you know, the Tudor does have some things going forward, including the the movement inside of it, the bracelet I believe is incredible with a class leading clasp and you know the overall you know, the fit and finish, the polish of the the Tudor, you can tell that you know obviously it is more expensive but I think it's a valid, in my opinion I, I, I think the the Tudor is worth the money but you know uh, I won't fault you if you like the, the Seiko, I bought one myself so I know uh, I don't blame you at all so but I do think that the Seiko uh, packs quite a value and uh, really hard to beat. And if this does it for you, and then don't even bother with this one. But uh, anyway, if you have any questions about either watch, feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope you find uh, this uh, video helpful. Really helps if you can like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.